Well, a good morning to you and welcome to UTB Online Radio. Today is Tuesday, October 6, 2020. My name is Carl Coates. I come from a ministry here in Norway called Pure Bible Study. And if you're looking to contact us, by all means, you can email ourdailytimothytime at gmail.com. Good or bad, we'd love to hear from you and um, we encourage the, the, the communique. Moving on, the read today, if you've been following the reading plan that we set out, we'll be in the Pauline Epistles, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 today, and in the Old Testament we'll be reading Genesis chapter 37, and uh, just some the, the some numbers for you, for those of you that enjoy this, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 487 words will be read, and Genesis 37, uh, 893, so that's a total of 1,300 uh, and 80 words should take you just over nine minutes to get through. Now, how do I get to nine minutes? We work on an average of 150 words a minute on this Our Daily Timothy Time program. So it's um, rounded off 10 minutes of your day to do two chapters. It's really possible. It really, really is. Eh? And uh, find the time, please. And just uh, get in the Word of God and read. And uh, you know it will happen. As you read, you'll start to, uh, questions will come up. And then you get to ask uh, uh, faithful men about those questions and they'll answer you and, and give you passages of scripture to look at. And, and, and that'll cause growth. And that's what you want. You want to be maturing all the time. And uh, questions are healthy. There's never such thing as a, as a silly question or a, or a stupid question. All questions are good. Um, if they're asked in, in, with a good, sincere heart, when I say a good heart, with a sincere heart, with a, with a, with a desire to learn. And um, so, keep reading. Let's get on with where we are with this week's theme. The theme this week is Furnished Saints. The text we're basing our theme off is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And the title of the message this week goes by the, by the heading of The Canker Cure. Now, we looked at that yesterday. Canker, former gangrene. Uh, the, uh, you know, in the context of the scripture, uh, in Second Timothy chapter two seventeen, and it reads, "And their word will eat as, as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus." So anybody that has profane and vain babblings, uh, people that strive not about words to no profit, uh, but to, to the subverting of the hearers, their word will eat as doth a canker. So their words will just turn into gangrene, and that's no good. And in between verse 14 and 16 is the verse that, um, I, I don't want to say the grace message rests on, but it's, a, it's one of the foundational f key verses of, of the grace message. And that is a study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That kind of fits, the verse 15 fits between 14 and 16, you know. Well, it does fit there, but um, um, in the context, it's, um, read that out for yourself and have a look at it very closely. Very interesting how Paul wrote that. Anyway, um, the issue today, or the sub, not the issue, the subtitle we're looking at uh, is going to be Approved Unto God. And before I get into that, I just want to say this. You've noticed that the theme is furnished saints, and the text is 2 Timothy 2.15. Now, if you've been in, um, in Christendom for a while, you would have noticed that there is an argument, bet um, when I say an argument, within Christianity, there's a position called the mid-Acts position. Uh, I'm a mid-Acts Bible believer. Our position is this. We say that uh, 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 Paul's 13 epistles are written to us. Now, anybody that's a covenant theologian that adheres to that, or whatever other denominational um, system that you're working under, I mean, covenant theology and dispensational Bible study, are they two competing or, uh, or opposing uh, uh, Bible study methods, really. But uh, whatever, moving slightly forward, whatever denomination you're in, if you're not a mid-Acts Bible believer, you're going to question um, uh, that, that 2 Timothy 3.16. You're going to say, oh, but you know, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God, which it is. But in the light that the attack comes from, it comes from that position of 
hey, you guys are saying that, that Paul's epistles are the only ones you read, but you know, you're leaving out the rest of the Bible, which is not true. So the, the, the theme this week, I've called it Furnished Saints, using that terminology from 2 Timothy 3.17. If you've got an open Bible, you can turn there with me. It reads that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So I've called it Furnished Saints. So in if you look at the, t the theme this week and the text we're using, I'm suggesting or submitting to anybody that's new to the grace message that 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 and 17, you can say, is a coadjutor to 2, 50, uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. They go hand in hand, but you need to know how they go hand in hand. Let me just quickly touch on it. Um, you know we're in 2 Timothy 3.16 it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction. If you look at the layout of Paul's epistles, Romans is a book of doctrine. Corinthians is a book of reproof. Correction, that's Galatians. Then you go back to doctrine, which is Ephesians. Then after Ephesians, you, what, what's after Ephesians? You've got Philippians. That's a book on reproof. And then you've got Colossians, book on correction. Then you go back to doctrine, which is Thessalonians. And then you've got the, the four personal epistles, the Timothys and Titus and Philemon. So um, I hope you can see that it, it was worth bringing up because that, that argument comes up quite a bit. And it's easily explained if you rightly divide the word of truth. Now, getting back to where we are today, we're looking at the, the subtitle of Approved Unto God. Okay, so let's just read it in the context. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now we're looking at approved unto God. Study. Why do you need to study, Timothy? To show thyself thyself approved unto God. Okay, so for sitting down and, 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 and um, doing my outline for today, to me, it's quite apparent that there's two different there's two different routes we're going here at the same time. Okay, uh, number one is doctrine, and number two is conversation. Now, conversation that's your lifestyle, how you walking your in your sanctified life, how are you growing in your in, in the grace message, how are you growing now in time. Uh, uh, okay, so your conversation. There's two different there's doctrine and conversation that I want to look at today. Okay, now you want to this this idea of being approved unto God study to show that you're thyself approved unto God doctrine wise how do you study to show yourself approved well I'd submit to you that the book of Romans is our foundational block that's the book that any believer that's just been saved or if you've been saved for a while and you you've been reading all over the shop floor when I say shop floor, all over the Bible, believing it's all written to you, might I suggest that go back to the book of Romans. That is the foundational book of doctrine for any Bible believer, anybody that's just been saved. How do you get saved? You believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins by dying on Calvary's cross 2,000 odd years ago, shedding his blood on that cross, being buried for th uh, 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 three days and ri rising in on the third day. Okay, if you've believed in that, you're a saved person, then you would need to go to Romans because Romans builds, there's four pillars in there. You've got, um, you've got the, the, just, the condemnation and justification in the first pillar. Then you've got your, uh, um, that's one to, chapters one to five, chapters six, seven and eight, looks at your at the sanctified life the the, the how to's the what's going on for us now uh, and then you've got um, then you've got that dispensational pillar that 9 10 and 11 which speaks of Israel go which goes back to the book of Acts okay that helps us understand some things about Israel then you've got uh, 12 to 16 which is another the fourth pillar which is the application that we have okay so Romans, to, to show yourself approved unto God, you need, to have, you need to have the form of sound words. In fact, let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, if you will, if you've got a Bible there, and uh, I hope you do. Uh, 6 verse 13. 
chapter 6. Um, you know what? I, I've, I've misplaced a verse. It's not the end of the world. But that form of sound doctrine needs to be built into your inner man. Okay. And then for once you've got Romans done and settled, then you then once you've got that, then you can move on to the more advanced doctrine, more meat. Ephesians. You learn the, what's the whole goal of, of, of this plan and purpose of God, etc., etc. And then you go on to Thessalonians. Now, should you only read Romans and once you've done that, then move on to Ephesians? I'll say to you, no, you need to read Paul's epistles constantly. It'll take you 29 days if you read three chapters a day. You need to constantly be reading that, but you need to be, you need to spend time in Romans, be taught it by a faithful man that rightly divides the word of truth, and he can expound the scriptures to you so that you do get built up. Okay, you get that foundation laid. Okay. So in light of being approved unto God, your doctrine needs to be right. Okay, you need to know which dispensation that you live in, and it is the dispensation of grace. You need to know who your apostle is. You need to know the distinction between the prophetic program, which was from the foundation of the world, and the mystery, which was from before the foundation of the world, Romans 16, 25. Uh, you need to know that. You, there's, uh, yeah, you need, you need to know the, 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 the difference between the prophetic program and the mystery. You need to know about the, that you're not Israel, that there's a difference, there's a distinction between Israel and the church, the body of Christ. And it's also different, uh, 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 going into, into minors here, there's a difference between the little flock and us today, being the church, the body of Christ. Don't confuse them. And then just knowing which books are written to you, Romans to Philemon. The rest of the books are written for us, for our learning and for our comfort. So those are the things we need to, to, to understand in order to be approved. Now that word approved in Greek is uh, dokimos. It's uh, uh, pleasing. Another word for it would be tried. Uh, approved or tried. Okay. Um, you can also perhaps say accepted. Okay. So I look at that first block of, you, we need to have the doctrine right. Okay. And um, you know, if you look at the, the at the, the the carnal Corinthians in chapter in First Corinthians, if you read about where they were and what they were up to, and yet they were saved people, but could God use them effectively at the time? You got to ask yourself that question. You know, so we need to grow, and to grow, you need to study to show yourself approved. And your uh, um, now, he, let, let's just move on a little bit here. Let's go to the, your conversation, your lifestyle as a body member, as a member of the church, the body of Christ. You know, uh, Paul says here, if you go over to 1 Timothy 3, 1 Timothy 3 verse 6, it says here, well, we'll read from, uh, we'll go from verse 1. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop must then be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. You see that good behavior? You know, there you've you been pleasing unto God, you know. Uh, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, uh, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth his own, uh, own house well, his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Number six is where, verse six is where I want to get to you. Not a novice. Okay, he needs to be trained. He needs to be approved unto God. Uh, lest he be lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So, um, in our conversation, we can't be a novice. Especially if you're going to be going into the ministry. Uh, uh, you mature saints, perfected saints ought to do the work of the ministry. Okay. Uh, let's look at some other verses. Thessalonians. Come with me to Thessalonians number 1. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Uh, 5.23 it says here, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there, there's another issue about being approved unto God. You know, the, our well you just read what we, we heard what we had to say. Then also, let's look at, you know, every day, you know, when, you, when, you're in the, when you're in the grind of your day, 
You know, there's sometimes, you, it's a lot of, not sometimes, a lot of the time, it's our attitude that determines our uh, uh, how far we get. You know, there's that old saying out there in the world, it's not your, your, your aptitude, but your attitude will determine your altitude. You know that saying, I'm sure you've heard it. Um, so your attitude, so now what, how, are we, in our conversation, how, how are we ought to be approved unto God? How are we meant to behave ourselves in our thinking? Listen to this. Listen to what Paul writes here in, in Colossians chapter 3, verses uh, 23. Paul writes here, uh, hang on, have I got the right verse? Give me one moment, 3.23, here we go. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now look at, let's go back to Colossians 3 verse 23. And, who, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Okay, so you study to show yourself approved unto God, which leads me to the next thing here. Who are you studying for? Are you studying to be um, 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 old uh, uh, Mr. Brainy Box that knows everything, that can, that can at every corner cut people off and, and butt into conversations and try to tell them that everything that you... Look, I'm guilty of this. When I first came to knowing the, the grace message, there were times where I just wanted to lay the whole message in 10 minutes. And, and that puts people off, and it just, it, it's not a good thing, you know. And uh, you've got to learn how to get out of that. But uh, that issue of who are you studying for, you, to be approved unto God, and uh, hopefully not for man. Now, if you go over to, you know, sometimes you also, you, you, um, you, you want to build your knowledge so that you that you of a higher standing to the other brothers. And, and it happens. And uh, let's look at some scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Let's, let's listen to this. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So my understanding of that, of that passage there is, uh, you know, when, you, when you're studying, you, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it to look good and clever? Or are we doing it unto God? So that we can be the vessel that God wants us to be. Now, when I say the word vessel, if you go back over to your right, go to Second Timothy chapter two again, and uh, at the near the end of the chapter, it says here uh, from verse twenty. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. But if a man therefore purge himself from these. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Now that verse there goes hand in hand with 2 Timothy 3.17. Um, so we want to be approved unto God so that we can, we can be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and, pre and prepared unto every good work. You go across there uh, to um, chapter 3 verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we study, un we study to show ourselves approved unto God. We, you know, you know, there's sometimes in the ministry um, that 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 I find that you think, yeah, you know, you, you who, who am I doing this for? And I, I've got to constantly remind myself, hey, study to show thyself approved unto God. I'm not doing it to look good in front of anybody else. And, uh, you know, some people think, you know, you know what happens, out the, you know what happens is you'll go, you'll study and you'll gain knowledge. And then with that knowledge, you know, sometimes the people that you sat under, like I came out of a charismatic background. So the people that I used to look up to, I've now come to understand right division. And now I'm going, whoa. Hold on, you need to look at it like this, because if you do, this opens up, then that opens up, that opens up, that opens up, this becomes clearer, that becomes clearer, that becomes so clear, it's unbelievable, and you want to tell them that, but because the knowledge you have, they perceive you as being a, a Mr. Know-it-all, and you talking down at them, and, and that's, and that's, um, 
Yeah, that that can be quite that, that's um, it. It happens easily, but it's quite it's 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 um. I hope you get what I'm trying to say there. So, uh, yeah, that uh, the man of God be uh, three verse seventeen that the man of God be perfect and thoroughly finished unto all good works. So we do it unto God. We study unto God. So I've got to remind myself. I'm not studying to be the Mister Clever Know It All. I mean, what I what what I'm learning now. I can almost I can't guarantee it, but I I I believe that there's there's faithful men that where I'm at they've forgotten that in the 80s already. You know, they, they when I speak of it now or if it comes up, they that's a, a refresher for them. They're going, oh goodness me, I haven't I haven't thought about that for for ages. So yeah, we study unto God not to be Mister Clever, you know, Mister Mister Clever Clogs as uh, <laughs> Mister Clever Clogs. Yeah, anyway. Uh, and then I want to I want to go I want to I want to shift on to the next point here. If we are approved, study to if we study to show ourselves approved unto God, we will have the profit when we speaking to people and teaching people. We'll have the profit because we we would have been approved. We would have we would have been reading. We would have got the foundation built into our edifice, Romans, and then moved on to Philippians, not Philippians, Ephesians. So we will have profit. Now, you know, you, you don't want to be, st st uh, as it says in 2 Timothy 2.14, uh, before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit. You don't want to be that person that strives about words to no profit. If we study to show ourselves approved unto God, we won't have that problem. We will have profit. The, 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 the sound doctrine we teach and preach will be of profit to the hearer okay and we won't have profane and vain babblings because we will rightly divide the word of truth if we study to show ourselves approved unto god okay and then and then we will be and uh, if you come with me to Ro romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 the last chapter in the book of romans there's a character here that needs to be brought up a bible character uh, and he goes by the name of um, verse, ver, Romans 16, verse 10. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them that are of the, which are of Aristobulus household. Okay, the guy I want to show you there is Apelles. Who, do you, who would you rather be? Would you rather be the Apelles in, in Romans 16 or the Hymenaeus and Philetus in, in, in uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse six, 17, I think it is. Who would you rather be? Of course you would rather be the, the, the Apelles, approved unto God. Look how Paul at the end of his letter, uh, he salutes him. That's what you want to be. You, you, your name is as, pre you know, if you go back to the wisdom books, it's written there, that your name is precious, eh? So who would you rather be? Would you rather be remembered as the Apelles or the Hymenaeus and Philetus that didn't rightly divide the word of truth and caused people, upset people's faith? So that's something to think about. And if you study to show yourself approved unto God, if you are approved unto God via, the, via study, you won't deny the Bible timeline. What do I mean by that? I'm going back to Hymenaeus and Philetus. I'm going straight back to them because it's in the context of where we're reading. And look what they do. Who concerning, verse 18, who concerning the truth of earth, saying the resurrection has passed already and overthrow the faith of some. Hey, if you are approved unto God via study, studying the word of truth, that is, rightly dividing it, you are not going to make that same mistake and overthrow the faith of some okay that 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 is you know that is just so key you don't want to overthrow the faith of some because that's detrimental and ultimately you're going to stand at the judgment seat of christ and that's in that review and it's not going to be so good that's going to be burnt up by fire you know in closing I want to take you to another passage of scripture, Galatians. Come with me to Galatians chapter 1. Sorry, I should have brought this up a bit earlier. It slipped my mind. Um, this issue of who you're studying for, who you're trying to, what's your deal? You know, we're told to study to show thyself approved unto God. Okay. 
We're not doing this to elevate ourselves in, in puffed up in knowledge, etc., as the scriptures say. But look what Paul writes here in, first, uh, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So I hope you can fit that in and see where, that, where, where I'm coming from reading that passage of scripture. I look at the time, the time is just, is, has, has fleeted away. And um, I just want to wrap this up by going back to 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. And just reading it one more time. Okay, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Dear listener, dear friend, um, thank you for tuning in today. I hope that that uh, uh, sheds a bit of light on this verse. Yesterday we looked at um, the issue of study. Today we've looked at the, the subtitle, the issue of approved unto God. And uh, tomorrow we, we're going to further that on by um, going to the next major point in, in that text. And... Um, what a lovely text to go by. And just remember, when we look at that study to show thyself approved unto God, when you read that, read that in the context of, of, of the chapter and of the book. You, you know, 2 Timothy, the church, it's, the, it, life had gone, as we would say nowadays, pear-shaped in the ministry for Timothy. And um, Paul had some things to say there. And uh, just read it in the context, you know. And... Um, a, I'm going to say this too. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. If Paul tells, well, if the Holy Spirit uh, via the pen of Paul, if, if Paul tells us to rightly divide the word of truth, would it not be reasonable to think that Paul would tell us how to? And I submit to you, yes, he did. When he wrote Ephesians. And let's lastly, sorry, man. You know, we write here, we might as well bring it up. Lastly, a little bit of homework until we catch up tomorrow. Um, Ephesians chapter 2. Read the chapter, but I, I want you to look at verse 7, verse 11, and verse uh, 13. You'll see some phraseology there, some phrases. You'll see the ages to come, you'll see time past, and you'll see but now. Those are the three divisions in the Bible timeline that we need to understand. That is rightly dividing the word. One of the aspects of rightly dividing the word of truth is knowing time past, but now in the ages to come. Dear friends, um, let me be off. Wherever you are in the world listening to this message, have a fantastic day. Grace and peace. Until tomorrow, Maranatha.